All right, guys, uh, we're actually coming to the end of our time here at WBC. We got a chance to meet with Bel Bill Molyneux. Hello. We, uh, who's worked with Lock and Load, who's worked with Worthington Publishing. Schultz Games. Schultz, a couple of others. His most recent release was Bloody Mohawk. Right. In 20, was that in 2018? Yeah. Last summer. And now he's working on a follow-up effort to that. If you don't know anything about Bloody Mohawk, it is tactical level uh, French and Indian War. Correct, we're French and Indian War. 10 or 12 scenarios, yeah. I think. And now he's coming out with the new volume of that. So we what is that called? Silver, Savage Wilderness. And Savage Wilderness, uh, it's 16 scenarios. And the exciting thing is we have a, a park ranger that runs Fort Frederick. They actually devised and developed in one scenario, the Battle of Fort Frederick yeah, in that's great. Maryland. That's great. Um, Fort, and that's because he had a lot of knowledge and experience right. about that battle. That's awesome. So, and uh, our Fort Ligonier scenario, we have Dr. Walter Powell, who actually was the professor and the main person in charge of Fort Ligonier for yeah, 14 okay. years. Well, so cool. I actually have uh, people that operate these historic sites coming up with the scenario. That's great. Well, that's good that people have gotten interested in that. And, you know, history is one of those things that's great to learn. So it's an intro level war game. Yes, it's low but complexity. Low complexity, which doesn't mean it's boring. It's just low complexity, right? Not a lot of additional or exceptional rules. And you the know, concept between my games is they are sold at historic sites. We now have yes. Bloody Mohawk in 22 historic sites. Which is really so cool. So if you go to Fort Ticonderoga and you know, Fort Ligonier, Fort Frederick. Yeah. Um, so we have families buying Bloody Mohawk, That's not great. knowing anything about war games. Yeah. I got a letter from someone that thought it was a puzzle. Took it home. <laughs> I found out it was a game. Well, it could be a puzzle to figure out the rules, right? So, uh, so we've had. Uh, uh, so it's going to a new audience. Yeah. And then you get the mom and dad playing with the kids. Yeah. And then they move on to something else. Yeah. Of course, they won't move on to that squad leader, but something Well, they the could, team. potentially. Yeah. Right. I know a lot of us started playing, you know, simpler war games, Avalon Hill, some of their old ones. And we've all grown up and play different games right. now. So, so the new scenarios, what do they focus on? Um, it's the... We, we did two scenarios on Pontiac's War, okay. which is after the French Indian War. Yep. The Fort Frederick scenario is totally a what-if hypothetical. Right, because you it, mentioned the natives never got within with nine miles. Nine miles. They stayed okay. away from, it's this large stone, stone fortress. Got it. And it's a beautiful site uh, in Big Pool Springs, Maryland. Mm. Uh, so the, the scenarios for that particular scenario is 30 turns. Wow. So if you have Bloody Mohawk, there's a scenario in this that has a lot more bite to it. Yeah. It will take two to three hours to play this Fort Frederick scenario. Yeah. Which is great. You know, I think that will appeal more to, to some of the more hardcore core war gamers. Yes. They like a long battle, a lot of reinforcements and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, there's reinforcements every 10 turns. Um, there's also some new addition rules where artillery now stacks with okay. the regular unit, which okay. wasn't in Bloody Mohawk. Yep. So are there any new units being added? No new units. Um, however, uh, which is unique in uh, Bloody Mohawk and also in Savage Wilderness, is every page has a picture of a reenactment unit yeah. or a person reenacting. And uh, Where do you get those great pictures? At French Indian War reenactments yeah. that I go to. Yeah. Uh, you go almost every weekend, right? Pretty much. I, I watch your Facebook and it's yeah. like, oh, you're Lisa, you're Lisa, it's Lisa, right? Yes. Your Lisa must be an angel because she's uh, uh, we come back a little bit this year. Okay, okay. Uh, but yes, uh, I try probably two to three a month. Okay. And you do it with your sons. Yes. Which yeah. is, I, I think, take my son awesome. Ethan and then my nephew Lance. Nephew, your nephew. And a lot of people think they're, they're brothers, but they're yeah. not. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, it was really neat to go to Fort Niagara okay. uh, this past year. And my games were stacked floor to ceiling. Nice. And I don't know if anyone knows Dennis Bishop. He's a very famous game designer in his own right, okay. Man Magazine and so forth. And I got to meet him this year at Fort Niagara. Wow. And he said last summer he was at Fort William Henry and he walked in the gift shop and saw Wilderness Empire stacked floor to ceiling. Which is your game with Worthington. And he sort of joked with me that, you know, my games are low complexity, but he says he'd never seen anyone market them in gift yeah. shops like you have. Yeah. So, so well, that you was, know how to build a display, right? Right. <laughs> I know that's in your background. Right. So that was, uh, and it, 
So hopefully after Savage Wilderness comes out, I'll be releasing a Zulu War battle pack. Ooh, okay. And we've decided That's nothing to, to do with the French and Indian War. Nothing at all. all right. But the French and Indian War will be laid to rest after Got this it. with lock and load. And we're going to move on to some Zulu War scenarios. Nice. The same concept. And we're also going to be increasing the complexity. Okay. Going from a 2-3 value up to a 5 or 6. Okay, great. Because these will be made for the hardcore war gamer. Right. And uh, once again, through lock and load. Through lock and load. Okay. So, and hopefully that will get rolling uh, by mid-November. What, what, what is that going to be called? David has not told me the title. What the title yet. is yet? Okay. Uh, David but Heath something the Zulu Wars. Yes, he, he will come up with an awesome, stunning title. Okay. Okay. Um, he came up with Savage, Savage Wilderness. Yeah. yeah. And that's a unique thing with him. Is he likes to come up with a catchy catchphrase. There you go. So I also understand you're working on a Wake Island game. Wake Island was released three months ago. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, I, uh, believe it or not, with the, lock and load. With lock and load. Okay, I need and to, I also uh, have a Tarawa that they're going to release. And I saw that big map of. Um, I brought a giant map of Tarawa. Yeah. And I, I turned that over to David. Okay. And the idea is for them to turn that map into the use of uh, Heroes of the Pacific. There you go. I like Heroes of Pacific by Lock yep. and Load. Great tactical um, game. And I have all their X maps and everything. Yep. But they don't have a, a giant Tarawa, Tarawa map yeah, of the yeah. entire island. Yeah. So I ordered extra counters from Lock and Load. Okay. They sent them to me, and I actually Built bought a... the Tarawa game. So how many how many turns is that game? It took me 14 hours, uh, 72 turns, okay. two different weekends. Wow. Um, and so I brought the map because maybe there's someone else out there who would like to order a Tarawa map yeah, sure. from Lock and Load. Sure. Um, there's no order of battle or anything that created. Okay. I just okay. sort of threw counters out and right. started playing. So people could maybe do a little research of their own, right. figure out what's what was there and, and have some fun, right? Right. One square mile of hell, I believe is what right. they call Tarawa. It's a seven foot map at one yeah. in Texas. So. There you go. <laughs> so what do you love about doing what you do? Doing games and I think my my best thing uh, when I made Bloody Mohawk with all my games is I've received letters from parents oh, okay. about they bought the game at Fort Ligonier, they had no idea what it was, we're now playing the scenarios every Tuesday night as a family. That's great. And I think, uh, you know, I, you know it's, it's not a cup of tea for everyone, Sure. Uh, but the audience that, block, that Bloody Mohawk is reaching out to mm -hmm. really is trying to expand the hobby. Right. Uh, and, and we talk a lot, I know Alexander, because we're younger. I'm, I'm not very young, but Alexander's younger. You know, we've talked a lot about we got to get younger people involved in history and wargaming because, you know, us older folks are going to one day expire. So it's like getting new young people into wargaming, exposing them to those concepts, instilling that love of history, very important. Well, yeah, I was at a, um, a book signing of the French Indian War College of Fort Ticonderoga that Rich Strum runs with uh, Stuart Lilly. Mm -hmm. And I was honored to sign my games yeah. with the professors and authors of French Indian War books. Okay. However, when I was explaining to people how board war games work, yeah, yeah, they just explaining zone of control was a nightmare <laughs> they didn't to get people it. with PhDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, incredible people to work with and talk with. Um, but wargaming is a hobby that a lot of people have not been exposed to. Yeah, you're right. I think things, you and I have had a lot of conversations, things that we take for granted, zones of control, for yeah, I spent 20 minutes explaining yeah. zone of control to it's, it's a difficult concept for most people to get, to, to, to latch on to. So when do you think Savage Wilderness will be ready? I think when uh, we're talking about the first week of September. Okay, so about two months. Yeah. Six weeks. So, and I think the PDF file will be released sooner. Okay. Uh, we're waiting for the rest of the counters to be printed out. Got it. Um, Those beautiful laser cut smoky counters. I no. love them. No. We are moving away from those. Oh, I love that. I love that we smoky smell. We are moving smell. away to um, thick cut Cardboard counters. Okay. Okay. We have rounded corners. Yep. And one of the reasons is 
is David was having problems with production with the laser printer. Okay. When you have a fort saying, I need 50 copies of Bloody Mohawk at Fort William Henry. It, it takes a while. <laughs> and it takes him 35 to 40 minutes to make a sheet. Wow. And a home game. So if you're selling 50 games, that, so, my yeah. math's not great, but that, that's you a know, lot of hours. Well, when you times that times Fort Ligonier, Fort right. Frederick, Fort right. Niagara, uh, Fort Bedford, yeah. that starts to add up. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So and they all the, those gift shops open in early April, May. Got it. And they don't call until they're ready to open. Got it, got it. They don't want the game sitting around collecting dust. So, you know, they're calling all that the same okay. time, the same month. That's great. So very interesting, Bill, to, to, to see how you're working hand in hand with, you know, these, these historical forts to assist them and also teach people concepts of war gaming. I, I just think it's fantastic. So I, I wanted to Give, give you some kudos for that. I think Thank that's you. really great. And I have to, you know. And they're a fun, playable game. They're they're fun. We enjoyed Bloody Mohawk quite a bit. Very good. Yeah. And the the, the historic site, Fort Ticonderoga, mm -hmm. has been fantastic. Uh, there's a man named there, Stuart Lilly and Rich Strum. They're just fantastic. Robert Ambrose. Um, all these different forts. Um, people that run these yeah. different, different historic sites been very good. Yeah. Uh, good. So it's been a very nice merger. Yep. And uh, it's uh, I'm sort of surprised about how long war gaming has been out. You don't see war games in these historic sites. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I really do. Well, Bill, we really appreciate you joining us today. So once again, uh, this follow-up to Bloody Mohawk Savage Wilderness. Wilderness should be out in September-ish. Don't hold us to that, right? Right, right? We're not we're not lock and load. We're not David David Heath. Sometime in the next couple of months. Right. So look for that. There's at least one scenario that's a little more advanced. 30 turns. A little longer. Um, Fort Frederick, right? Yep. So that's going to be an interesting experience. But we really appreciate uh, what you do. And, and thanks for meeting up with us here at WBC. Thank you. All right, Bill. Thank you. Yep.